friends in Christ, for many of us, we woke this morning, the morning after the election, to devastating news and our hearts broke. We experienced a death, a very real one. Death comes in many forms, and this death is that of our hope for the next four years for our country. A clergy friend of mine posted on her Facebook this morning, I listened, I thought, I prayed, I hoped that gender and race didn't make a difference anymore. I was proven wrong. Lord, have mercy. As I read her post, my heart broke and resonated with her expression of the death she experienced last night. We all have something, some hope, some idea, some prayer that feels like it died last night. For some of us, particularly our BIPOC and queer siblings, one of the deaths is that of a sense of and hope for safety. For many women, BIPOC and queer folks, we are also feeling fear rising within us. Will our rights be stripped away? On election night, in the meeting of our Christian Ed and Racial Equity Coordinated Areas of Ministry, we discern, as we discerned how God is calling us to respond to a different world event, we heard God calling us, inviting us to a ministry of lament. As I woke this morning, I knew that that meeting was spirit-led. For we do need today, this week, and in the weeks and months and years ahead, a ministry of lament. Lament is an ancient spiritual practice in prayer. It was embodied in the life and the work of the prophets. It was expressed through many of the Psalms and in the wisdom tradition. Lament helps us remember that even as we live in God's world, this world is not all that it could be. And lament is a form of action and witness steeped in prayer. Lament offers us a modality through which we can express our fear, despair, hopelessness, deep sadness, grief, anger, and bewilderment. As we express our deepest, heaviest emotions through lament, the spirit begins to move within us, transforming our inner world and inviting us into action. Lament is action. And lament brings forth a further call into action. So today and this week, we lament. We feel the sadness. We remember that we are not alone in these feelings. And we gather as community and express our lament together. We allow God to instill in us through our lament a deeper sense of compassion and care, resilience and hope and justice and love. And we ground ourselves in the way of Jesus practicing the ABCs of resilience, agency and adaptability, being present and blessing, and community and co-creation of meaning. My friend, Reverend Dr. Storm Swain, professor of pastoral care at United Lutheran Seminary in Philadelphia, posted on her Facebook a reflection of the ABCs of resilience. She wrote, we do action that makes a difference and find ways to adapt to this new reality even as we mourn. We stay present to those most impacted by this new reality. Reach out in solidarity to those who feel isolated and fearful and try and make sure that our actions are blessing rather than becoming part of the problem. And we find create and deepen community that is life-giving and discover those things that begin to co-create meaning that can bear the weight of this new reality. So today, let us mourn and grieve and lament this situation.
together. Let us do so with compassion and love. For as Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us, hate cannot overcome hate, only love can. Tomorrow we will lean into the spirit of God, stand strong in the way of Jesus, and walk the path of justice, being witnesses of God's radical and inclusive love in this world. Today, we will mourn and grieve and lament. Friends in Christ, may God's presence rest upon you this day and always. And as you grieve and mourn and lament, may you know you are a beloved child of God. Amen.